hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make the simple alternate top it's really chic and trendy and appropriate for the summer so if you're in nigeria or you're in any other country where it's summer this top will be absolutely perfect it's really easy to make and i'm going to show you just how to make it however if you're new here and you haven't subscribed please don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you you also want to follow me on social media with the handles being shown on the screen all right guys enjoy the video and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up bye to make this alternate top you need the following items. You need some pins, you need your measuring tape, you need your paper scissors and your fabric scissors as well. You need your marker or in your case, you'll need a pencil. You need your magnet or pin cushion. I forgot to mention, but you also need your tailor's chalk or fabric marker. You need some fabric. I've got this lightweight fabric. It's not chiffon, but it's also not crepe. It's just some kind of fabric. And of course, you need your paper because we'll be making a pattern. You'd also need the following measurements being shown on the screen. Please take note of them. Start off by drawing a top line at the top of your paper horizontally. The top line should only be about 2 to 3 centimeters wide, however it doesn't really matter because it only serves as a guideline. This top line will also function as the shoulder or back line. Starting from the top line or the shoulder line, go ahead and mark the vertical measurements on the paper. The first vertical measurement you will need to mark will be the shoulder to the boss point measurement, so you want to go ahead and mark that on your paper. Afterwards, mark 2 inches above the shoulder to the boss point measurement and this will function as the armhole line. Next. Go ahead and mark your shoulder to waist measurement if you know it. However, if you don't know it, it's absolutely fine as it's not important for this particular top. And then the last thing you want to mark will be your shoulder to blouse length measurement, which is the one I did last. After marking all these points, go ahead and square out all the lines or all the marks that you've put on your paper. You can use your set square or your pattern master and if you would like to shop any of these tools, I've got them in the links below so check out the description box of this video or any other video and you can shop any of the supplies or the tools that I've put there. I absolutely trust them. So the next thing you want to do is you want to label appropriately so you will have from the top, you have top line or the shoulder line arm o line, the bust line, the waist line, as well as the length or the blouse length line. On the top and arm o lines, mark half the shoulder or back measurement and then go ahead and connect these two points with a vertical line as shown. The next thing I want to do is I want to put a guide in place so that I can get the perfect arm o. To put the guide in place, you want to measure the vertical line that you've just drawn and then whatever you have there, you want to get half of it plus half an inch. So for instance, if your vertical line that you have is 8 inches, you want to get half of it, that's 8 divided by 2, which will be 4 inches and then you want to mark, you want to add plus an extra half inch, so you'll mark 4.5 inches. So in this case, the vertical line I was working with was 8.5 inches, I went ahead to divide by 2 and add an extra half an inch, which gave me me about 4.75 inches which was where I marked my guideline. At the point where you mark the guideline you want to go in by half an inch and then you want to go ahead and place the pattern master as shown so that it's touching the guideline it's touching the ammo line and then it goes back to touch the top of the vertical line and then you want to go ahead and draw in the ammo curve. On the ammo and bust lines Mark a quarter of the bust measurement plus half an inch as is. So in this case, my bust measurement is 39 inches. A quarter of that is 9 3 quarters. I added a half an inch, which gave me 10.25, which is 10 1 quarter. So I went ahead to mark that. And then you want to go ahead and draw a slant line as free as you want it all the way till you get to the blouse length. Thank you. 
Next, go ahead and draw in the neckline, which will serve as a guide. You want the neck depth to be one inch and then the neck width to be about three and a half inches. And then you want to draw in the neckline as shown. It's better to use your pattern master so you can get a nice and even curve. After that, you want to mark one inch on the armhole vertical line and then you want to draw the shoulder slant as shown. Go ahead and square out the neck depth line till it touches the arm O line. So where you mark the one inch for the neck depth, you want to go ahead and just square it out or just roll a straight line so that you have one inch below the top line essentially. I used a different color of marker for this so that you can see clearly. After squaring out the neck depth line, Go ahead and mark anything from 5 inches to 5.5 or 6 inches depending on how full you want the altar neck area to be. I opted for 5.5 inches so I went ahead to mark 5.5 inches and then after doing that you want to redraw the new armhole line so that it connects to the 5.5 inches that you marked on the neckline. So as you can see I've gone ahead to draw in my new neckline and my new armhole and this is what it looks like. Because I like to give my top some character, I went ahead to draw a curve at the end so that I can have the front part of it longer. However, this is completely optional. If you want, you can have it straight, but I just wanted to have a slight curve in there. So I went ahead to draw a slight curve and that would only be present for the front piece of the pattern. So at this point we're done go ahead and label your patterns appropriately so at the point where we have um the straight line at the neckline we're going to be making a casing so the allowance there is two inches around the ham o is half an inch at the side seam i'm going to use half an inch but if you want to use one inch go ahead and use one inch at the hem i wrote half an inch however i changed my mind and later used one inch and then at the center back it's half an inch Go ahead and cut out the pattern as shown and then you're ready to cut out the fabric. Fold the fabric into two, making sure that the right sides are facing each other and all your markings will be on the wrong side. Then go ahead and pin the pattern. We'll be starting out by cutting out the front pattern first and of course it has to be unfold. So as you can see the fabric is unfold and I made sure that the center front aligned with the folded edge so that it's sharp and crisp. Pin the pattern in place ensuring the center front is straight and then go ahead and mark out the sewing allowances. So like I said earlier, I'm using 2 inches at the top to make the casing, I'm using half an inch at the armhole area, half an inch at the side seam area and then 1 inch at the hem because I changed my mind last minute. After marking out all the allowances that you require, go ahead and cut out the front piece of the fabric. After cutting out the front piece, go ahead and place the front piece on another piece of fabric that is folded so that you can cut the back piece. Essentially, you'll be using the front piece as a template to cut the back piece. The only major difference will be that at the back piece, at the center back, you would have the sewing allowance of half an inch and then at the hem, you would have it straight as opposed to having a curve. So go ahead and mark half an inch at the back for the center back area and then go ahead and cut it out using the center front or the front piece as a template. After cutting out the back pieces, it's now time to sort out the hem. To sort out the hem, you want to slightly unpin the bottom and then fold the front part in. Then you want to go ahead and fold the paper if it's convenient for you or cut off the excess on the paper. I decided to cut off the excess on the paper, which is the curved part that I later added. And then I folded the fabric in and then I pinned it back in place. After pinning it in place, I went ahead to mark out the allowance of one inch and then cut off all the excess that I have. So that means the front part is slightly longer at the hem than the back piece is.
After cutting out the back and the front pieces, go ahead and unpin the pattern and put the pattern aside. Starting off with the back piece, go ahead and measure the initial 2 inches that we left for the casing and then an extra 6 inches. So in total, you'll be measuring about 8 inches starting from the top up to where the 8 inches mark stops. From that 8 inches, you want to go ahead and sew all the way down on half an inch, making sure to lock your stitches at the beginning and at the end. So as you can see, I'm pinning all the way from the 8 inches mark and then I'm marking half an inch all the way and then I'm going ahead to sew that in place. After sewing it, here's what it looks like. To give it a professional finish, I went ahead to overlock it and then I'm going ahead to use some hemming glue and press it in place so that this stitch or this seam opens up nicely. In case you don't know what hemming glue looks like, this is what hemming glue looks like and it's basically used to finish off hems or seams where you don't want any stitch sewing. So I went ahead to cut out a little bit and I split it into two and I placed it at the bottom or underneath the seam and I opened it and ironed over it so that it stays like that in place. It basically just glues it as the name implies. Place the back piece on the table so that the right side is facing up and then go ahead and place the front piece on it so that the right sides are facing each other. You want to go ahead and sew the sides together on half an inch sewing allowance and you want to make sure to repeat it on the other side as well. After sewing, here's what it looks like and as you can see, the front piece is visibly longer than the back piece, which is exactly how I wanted it. The next thing to do is to finish off the armhole with your bias strip and if you don't know how to cut the bias strip, I'm not going to explain in details because I've got a detailed tutorial showing you how to cut and how to sew bias strips. So I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description bar as well as in the icons above. Definitely check out both videos, the first one on how to cut your bias strip and the second one on and how to finish your neckline or ammo with the bias strip. After finishing off the ammo with the bias strip, here's what it looks like. And as you can see, I didn't use the regular bias method. I used something slightly different. However, I wanted to give my top a very professional finish and I'm very happy with the results. So guys, at this point, we're nearly finished with the top and the next thing to do is to make the casing at the top. So you wanna start off by marking the two inches allowance that we left so that we can know where to stop our hemming. And then you want to fold it in place by folding in a little, which is about a quarter and then folding it over till it gets to that two inches mark after doing that you want to pin it in position and then you want to repeat this for the second piece second side at the back as well as for the front side as well After folding the casing and holding it in place with pins, go ahead and sew it in place. After sewing the casing, here's what it looks like and as you can see for each one, it opens at the beginning and it also opens at the end and that's so that we can easily pass the rope into it. So the next thing to do will be to make the rope. You want to get your fabric and you want to make sure your fabric is straightened out. So in this case, mine wasn't straightened out. I went ahead to straighten out my fabric. The next thing is to determine what the dimensions of your rope should be and my advice is you don't want your rope to be smaller than 50 inches in length so you can use 50 inches 55 inches or 60 inches however i went for 50 inches which is the barest minimum that i recommend and then you want it to be about two three quarter inches in width at least so if you want it to be bigger you can go for something bigger but i went with the minimum width which is two three quarter inches or 2.75 inches so i went ahead to cut out my strip and i have the strip that measured 2.75 inches by 50 inches which is what i ended up using for my belt After cutting out the desired strip, 
go ahead and fold it into two so that the right sides are facing each other. Then you want to go ahead and hold it in place with pins as shown. Afterwards, you will need to sew it in place in, with a half inch sewing allowance all the way from the top to the bottom. You want to make sure you leave a gap of about 2 inches on sewn so that you'll be able to turn the belt inside out when you're done. After sewing the strip, I like to trim off the edges and the corner to remove box so that when I turn it inside out, it looks nice. With a loop turner, go ahead and turn the belt or the strip to the right side. After turning the strip, go ahead and give it a good iron and then top stitch the gap close. You also want to make sure that you hem the bottom of the top by folding in half an inch twice. Afterwards, the next thing to do will be to pass the strip into the casing. So starting at one end of the center back, you want to go ahead and pass it or feed the belt into the casing with the use of a safety pin as shown. And then you want to go ahead and pass it until it comes out at the other end of the center back. After passing the belt into the casing, go ahead and adjust the gathers that are now formed around the neckline depending on how you want it to be. And at this point guys, we are now done with the top and this is what it looks like. Alright guys, so we've come to the very end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for staying tuned to the very end. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to leave your comments, suggestions and feedback in the comment section below. If you try it out, don't forget to send me photos. Thank you so much guys. Enjoy yourself and stay safe.